Hello everybody, it's Dave Neal, stand-up comic and host of Bachelor Nation News. In this video, we will be discussing the Clayton Eckert paternity scandal. As you know, we've been covering this scandal ad nauseum for several months now. I have not got a haircut since the scandal began. That's right, I do resemble a 1970 women's tennis pro. Uh, so let's hit some aces as we cover this story. Bachelor Clayton, former... NFL football player goes on the offensive. That's right. He's got seven lead blockers and he's smelling the end zone and he is going to knock your socks off, your Christmas wool socks. Those itchy ones you're wearing for festive reasons will be knocked off and your toes will be chilling on a cold bare floor. One week before Christmas, these documents come out. They were, I guess, filed last week and uh, Elf on a court shelf, has landed them into my uh, a, a public uh, n inbox here. Of course, these documents can be found. They are, in some ways, a response to this Medium article that Jane Doe wrote two weeks ago. I say Medium article, but what it is is a, a, a home that you can upload whatever diatribe or manifesto you want. In her case, um, uh, playing the victim of cyber bullying, cyber harassment, and uh, using my name, uh, I don't know, around a dozen times or so to claim that I'm the one perpetuating all this hate towards her. I want no hate towards her, and in good faith on this Christmas season, I will be redacting her name, image, and likeness from every public filing I'm about to share with you. Follow me on Instagram at dneals, and also I'll be live on Patreon right after this video to continue talking about Bloody Monday, this wild day where Clayton files motions to keep this court case alive, to prove non-paternity, and so much else. Follow me on Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. And then this afternoon, I'm sure there'll be new information that comes by then. We'll have Bachelor Rush Hour, the afternoon podcast, which ties it all together. Just to tease uh, some things that will come out of this video, because it will be a long one here, uh, we do have an email that is ab absolutely wild that I'm going to share with you guys in one of the exhibits. The subject, the headline of this email says, having the baby if I don't hear back tonight. That sounds like a country music song, doesn't it? Doesn't that sound like something you might hear Carrie Underwood sing? I don't know. I don't know. I mean, to besmirch the good name of Carrie Underwood. Uh, that just feels like uh, a pickup truck scenario. All right, so we're going to dive into all the different motions. I did want to share with you, if you happen to live in Orange County or in the surrounding area and want to come to a stand-up show to laugh off all of the, I don't know, stocking stuffer, candy, and chocolates you've ate, Laughing Burns Calories, December 28th, next Thursday. I've got one of my last shows on the West Coast before I make the move east. Uh, but it looks like I might be back in LA sooner than later as my court case that was supposed to be today will be pushed to sometime in February or March. That's right. I am being sued for harassment because of videos just like this that I'm making that are trying to share the truth of what's going on out there. Well, here's another former uh, 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 girlfriend, shall we call it, of Clayton Eckerd shooting her shot. I interviewed Cassidy Timbrooks over the weekend uh, and uh, fans are loving this interview. She, of course, was on Clayton's season of The Bachelor right there. She was unceremoniously booted off and talked about her now sobriety and the lessons she's learned. Here's a quick, I'm going to play this as a palate cleanser before we get into the heavy stuff. Here's a quick clip of Cassidy Timbrooks shooting her shot with old Clayton Eckerd. Would you ever uh, rendezvous with old Clayton Eckerd? I would love to talk to Clayton again. Really? Yeah. Breaking news. Yeah. Like, I would, like I would to give to it another him. shot? Well, I, I don't know if he would ever talk to me because I was like, I was, you know, there was like that whole video that came out where I was like, don't fuck yourself, Clayton. But I was drunk and it was <laughs> a leaked video. I was venting to my close friend's story and somebody, somebody yeah. beefed me. What happened there? I just got, I got, I honestly, were, I'm you, a really you, okay. messy bitch. So I, all right. From one messy bitch to another. 
Um, me, me, that being me, by the way, I'm the messy bitch here, not calling anyone that. Um, we've got the response to what happened a few weeks ago, which was a motion was filed in family court here. Notice of, pla- this is December 4th, notice of placement of the case on inactive calendar and of intent to dismiss your court case. This court case was to be dismissed because nothing was going on. And when nothing's going on, they dismiss the case. I'm going to share, and again, uh, my plebeian, uh, uh, non-legal mind here, public school of Rhode Island education. I think they're still teaching that dinosaurs and, and Jesus wrote, wrote on their backs. I don't know. Either way, the, <laughs> did that happen? They all took Noah's Ark. It was a Uber, uh, Uber boat. Um, anyway, point being is I'm going to share um, my, uh, my very elementary view of what this actually means and any lawyers can comment if I get it wrong. So we've got four different motions and notices and things like that. Uh, Two of them are long, a couple are short here. So let's go to our first one. In the Superior Court of the State of Arizona, in and for the County of Maricopa, in the matter of Jane Doe, petitioner in Clayton Eckert, respondent, expedited motion to extend dismissal date on inactive calendar and schedule an evidentiary hearing. So what that means is, no, let's keep going. Let's keep going. Of course, Clayton doesn't believe he's the father. He doesn't believe she's pregnant, at least not with his children. And he doesn't want this motion to dismiss, in which case there would be no legal case for her to prove pregnancy and all that. She would just move on, right? Respondent Clayton Eckerd, by and through undersigned counsel, hereby files his expedited motion to continue on inactive calendar and schedule an evidentiary hearing. This motion is expedited as this matter is set to be dismissed on February 2nd, 2024. Of course, she is quote unquote due to be uh, giving birth to twins on Valentine's Day, February 14th. Oh, the old Cupid shuffle. Background petitioner has never provided respondent with any substantive proof of her alleged pregnancy, and all paternity tests have indicated there is little to no fetal DNA. Of course, I can bear witness that I've actually been on the receiving end of some of those test results that I also heard that no fetal DNA has been detected. Maybe this will be the Christmas miracle. Can you imagine that on Hallmark? Uh, The fetal DNA finally reveals itself. It rears its beautiful head. Um, Just like, you know, just like peeps around the corner from behind the shin bone. I don't know. Respondent maintains that the sexual activity that took place was not conducive to a pregnancy. Never, and as we know, Jane Doe uh, claimed they were intimate, but she never really said on paper that they had sex, although she's made some pretty wild claims privately. Nevertheless, and as recently as December 8th, 2023, Exhibit 1, petitioner continues to publicly maintain that she is pregnant with respondent's twins. We'll show that exhibit. Respondent believes the pregnancy has been fabricated as a means of harassing respondent who has an injunction against harassment against petitioner due to the harassing nature of her communications with respondent. Exhibit two, which again we'll also show, due to petitioner's relentless assertions that she is pregnant with respondent's twins and repeated outreach to the media about the alleged and very disputed pregnancy, respondent is entitled a judicial finding of non-paternity. So not only, uh, you know, because in some of these court cases, it seems like there's, you know, you, you know, not only does Clayton want to show that he's, that she's not pregnant, but that he's not the father. And, um, and if this case goes away, then we'll just never get the truth, right? We'll know, we'll know, we'll know, but we'll never, like, know in the court system. As and for his motion, respondent states as follows. This matter has been pending since petitioner Jane Doe filed a petition to establish paternity in legal decision-making, parenting time, and child support on or about August 1st, 2023. So she started this mess, right? Petitioner also subsequently filed a motion to communicate August 8th in motion for contempt August 23rd, attempting to coerce respondent into communicating with her prior to the birth of the alleged and believed to be entirely fictitious twins predating the injunction against harassment. Both of these motions were denied by this court. I need a gavel. Can we get a gavel here? I got this selfie stick. Maybe we'll just use this. Denied! Okay, I'm going to break a keyboard here. Uh, Both of those motions were denied by the court. Notably, petitioner testified under oath without medical support at the injunction against harassment hearing that the twins are due February 14th, 2023. Who will be attending the baby shower? Um, Petitioner has an order of protection, so then uh, that permits the parties to only speak about the family court action. 
Respondent timely filed his response on or about August 21st. Contemporary, gosh, don't be using these big words on a Monday morning. Contemporaneously with his filing is respondent's motion for leave to amend respondent's response to petition to establish paternity. Hold on, folks. Keep, you know, pop your Adderall or whatever you need to do. It's going to be a long one here. Petitioner has not provided scientific proof that she is pregnant. Petitioner has provided a video of a sonogram that appears to be a, have been borrowed. Well, that's a good way to put it. Lifted, stolen from a YouTube video from seven years ago. A video showing her pregnant stomach, which is believed to be edited in or depicts petitioner wearing a fake stomach. Screenshots of alleged appointment dates with doctors and multiple positive HCG tests. Petitioner has not provided any verified sonogram reports, fetal anatomy, scans required at 18 to 22 weeks, sonogram images from various checkups showing the progression of the pregnancy, or any additional medical information that would be typical of the high-risk pregnancy with twins that petitioner is claiming. You know, and again, not to make this about me because I really don't want to, but if you go to uh, my YouTube channel, um, you will actually see a very fun 20-week update. It's called a Christmas surprise, and there it is. Our healthy uh, baby is uh, almost 21 weeks in in my wife's belly, uh, healthy. And then, uh, of course, if you wanted to click on that, you can see the surprise that made my wife cry. And just about everything's making her cry, so it's not a big... We're getting Chinese food tonight. <laughs> You know, God bless her. We love her. A beautiful crier. Uh, but either way, very easy to go to these checkups, especially when um, you have uh, complicated births or, or twins. So, you know, go to them two every other week or so. So she hasn't provided any of that, right? Sonogram images from various checkups, additional medical information that would be typical of the high-risk pregnancy with twins that petitioner is claiming. All paternity results have come back showing little to no fetal DNA. Uh, the company that has been conducting the test, Ravgen, has conducted at least three paternity tests, two of which have shown little to no fetal DNA, and one was allegedly lost in transit. Ravgen does not provide written reports without a court order. Uh, and that's information that I actually heard from them uh, in discussing with them, hey, what needs to happen for you to provide some paperwork that shows this, you know? And it just seems to me that Ravgen is created to show if uh, someone is or isn't the father. It almost assumes that someone's pregnant, and therefore, I don't think it's meant to say you're not pregnant. It's just meant to say, we don't see the baby in this scientific way where we're able to see the chromosomal or whatever the hell they're looking at in the DNA. They just they just can't see it. Again, could be a special baby. Maybe the vaccine made babies invisible. Yeah, who knows, right? Uh, they're waiting on a fourth test before they can complete their report, but petitioner has not cooperated. Yeah, I believe they wanted a fourth test at 30 weeks, which I believe is right around where she would be now. Uh, I could have my math off. Let me know. Respondent has registered himself on the putative father registry. Okay, here's where it's going to get interesting. Why the hell would Clayton put himself on a father registry? That's interesting. Well, sometimes in the legal system, you have to use whatever obscure laws or uh, systems exist out there to keep this sort of uh, football on the field, if you want to keep a football terminology. They've extended the play. Respondent has been forced to register on the putative father registry. I call it the PFR, you know what I mean? The, uh, <laughs> out of, excuse me, the merch shirts. Out of fear that petitioner, Jane Doe, will use her social media platform to further promote her false pregnancy narrative. Respondent is entitled to a finding of non-paternity. Petitioner began this action in bad faith and based on an entirely fabricated pregnancy. Petitioner will continue to claim she is pregnant with respondent's children unless this court enters a finding of non-paternity and dismisses the case with prejudice based on that determination. This matter should be continued at least 60 days to allow respondent time to receive discovery from petitioner. Petitioner, contrary to Rule 49, has not provided any disclosure to respondent, though respondent vehemently denied denies that petitioner is pregnant by him, he is entitled to discovery that includes verified, not edited or otherwise fabricated medical records. Respondent requests this court set a virtual 30-minute evidentiary hearing on the issue of paternity, non-paternity, attorney's fees, and Rule 26 sanctions. Uh, based on petitioner's unreasonable behavior in filing this action without any scientific proof of pregnancy and continuing to publicly claim she is pregnant by respondent, respondent requests that she be ordered to pay his reasonable attorney's fees and costs incurred in this action pursuant to ARS 25-324. Wherefore, 
Respondent respectfully requests this court enter the following. Issue an order continuing the matter on the dismissal date for 60 days. All right, extend the plight. Keep this thing going. Schedule a virtual evidentiary hearing on the issue of paternity and non-paternity. Award respondent his re reasonable attorney's fees and costs incurred on the matter based on petitioner's unreasonableness pursuant. Any other order this court deems appropriate, including sanctions. Now, here's what's interesting. If we look at court fees, it's... Very unlikely that Jane Doe will pay the court fees, but what's happening here, as far as I can tell, is that the court fee uh, that they are looking for will keep the court case open because you can't just dismiss it now. The case can't just be thrown out because they're asking for something. And so by, they, I mean, you know, maybe they could ask for, uh, you know, a, uh, I don't know, pizza lunch at uh, Chuck E. Cheese by ask. I don't know if that's I don't know if that's legal in the Maricopa system, but that would be pretty nice if we could settle these things over some Chuck E. Cheese, get some Charles E. Cheese pizza on hand. I think we could solve a lot of world issues with a ball pit. Just my thoughts. Right. So anyway. Where did I go? I digressed. Um, by asking for these court fees, it is forcing a response, which means it can't just be dismissed, which is very smart. Um, or maybe it's normal. I don't know. I'm not a lawyer. What do I know? Right. I'm just some, uh, you know, podunk uh, guy over here. Uh, I've always said I'm covering the case like a designated driver after a night of all of their friends is drinking is forced to drive everyone home because everyone else is wasted. No other reporters that actually consider themselves like no one, you know, Rolling Stone who said, no, thank you. All these other places, entertainment news, all these places that cash their checks off of gossip said, no, 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 we don't want to cover this. Why? Well, we could get into that in another video, but either way I'm forced to dangle the keys and drive all of us home here. Um, so anyway, then they share the uh, 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 verification. Clayton declares on a perjury that he's the respondent in the above captioned matter. The motion to extend the dismissal date and evidentiary hearing. Wouldn't it be fun to go to that evidentiary hearing? I'm, I mean, maybe though, I, I might go in person for that one. Uh, maybe I won't be allowed to. We'll have to see. All right, so anyway, here's the evidence one. It's the... Um, Unveiling the unbearable, my online, my battle against cyberbullying and online harassment. It was probably because that she made this medium, this really real Pulitzer Prize winning. Now, to be quite honest, it's manic. And um, anyone who reads this having no clue about this case would see this as an unwell person. That's just where it is, right? But either way, um, this... Uh, sort of victimization that she's got going on is now being used as evidence that she is trying to harass in one way or another Clayton by talking about him and of course talking about me. She mentions my name a bunch. And then we go to the next exhibit here. Uh, exhibit number two, the injunction against harassment, which they share, which of course uh, she's not allowed to for the next year discuss um, uh, anything revolving around him. Like she's not supposed to, I'm not allowed to uh, contact him or things like that. Notice of claim of paternity. So this, I believe was written by the notary here, um, Mary Beth Burroughs. Um, and she's signed this, uh, notice where Clayton is the disputed father. Now he's got an attached um, affidavit of non-paternity just to say, I'm signing this as the father so that when she eventually says she's giving him up for adoption, we'll know that it has to come through me first. If you're giving our fake babies up for adoption, I want the right to fake adopt them first. You know, just normal stuff, right? Okay, we're going to get to the next motion, which will involve these wild emails. Wild emails, guys. Hang on tight. Go make your popcorn. Have a lunch. Do whatever you need to do. Let's get into it. Um, in the Superior Court of the State of Arizona, maybe we should have a sip of coffee here first, folks. In the matter of Jane Doe and Clayton Eckerd, motion for leave to amend respondent's response to petition to establish paternity. What this seems to be is, Clayton, thanks to you, the audience, who has raised money for him now has counsel that's saying, okay, you did, you did good, Clayton. You did a good job, right? He did a great job uh, for a non-legal expert here to cover himself and file everything. I'm sure he Googled things and use here to's and wentsforths and all that jazz that she uses, you know, the, 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 you know, thesaurus of legal jargon uh, that makes us feel smart. Why do you wear a bow tie? I don't know. I look smart with a bow tie on. You know what I mean? Um, <laughs> someone's, someone's got a bow tie on going, oh boy. Um, either way, point being is this is their way of kind of like um, uh, 
uh, cleaning it up and, and adding some different uh, procedural stuff to it. I, I, I imagine. Pursuant to Rule 28 of the Arizona Rules of Family Law Procedure, Clayton, th through undersigned counsel, respectfully requests leave from this court to file the amended response attached. So then attached, they have the amended response. They're requesting uh, the Rule 28 provides that leave to amend will be freely given when justice requires. Respondent's amended response is attached as Exhibit A. Note for clarification purposes, the amended response is not provided on the self-service document. So they get through it and blah, blah, blah. And then we'll go to, uh, he, uh, you know, Clayton signs it. And then we'll go to what the exhibit A is. And that is amended response to petition to establish paternity. Respondent, and so so this is this is uh, kind of re-entering, so, you know, with legal help, the uh, petition here, which again is thanks to you. And of course, the charitable uh, doings of his uh, law office that's helping him out here, which by the way, I'm sure the amount of time it takes him to do this it, it is quadruple whatever he can afford to pay. And it seems like justice is prevailing and people are helping out in part because they believe Clayton, in part because people are seeing me get thrown into this. And you might say, oh, Dave, you threw yourself into it. Well, well, maybe, maybe that's what needed to happen is some, you know, uh, gossip blogger to come in here and say, well, enough is enough. Let's shine some light onto this mold and try to clear it up with some sunshine, right, folks? Uh, Clayton Eckerd, by and through undersigned counsel, hereby submits his amended response to petition to establish paternity legal decision-making, parental time, and child support in states the following. I... A uh, petitioner has not provided any verifiable scientific evidence. Oh, excuse me. One petitioner has not provided any verifiable scientific evidence that she is pregnant. All DNA tests have come back showing little to no fetal DNA indicated. They will not release the records of the testing without a court order. Petitioner filed her petition only after respondent indicated that he did not want to have any relationships with her, uh, romantic or otherwise, after she performed oral sex on him. We're calling that the art of fellatio. The, uh, the old Italians, right? Uh, gave us uh, good pizza, Chuck E. Cheese and fellatio not to be done at the same time. Get out of the ball pit. Get out of the ball pit. Uh, and that's not a metaphor. That's a ball pit, and it's dirty. Purell yourself, folks. Prior to and following her filings, petitioner repeatedly threatened to go to the media about her pregnancy and sent respondents over 500 messages from different phone numbers and email accounts. This would be a great, like, Mint Mobile commercial. Need 500 different uh, phone numbers? Join Mint Mobile. Judge uh, Judge Galketsis, I believe that's Greek, found these messages and petitioners conduct to constitute harassment when she granted respondent Clayton's injunction against harassment on November 2nd, 2023. She said, clearly this is harassment, right? That's what the judge said. Um, a sampling of petitioner's efforts to force respondent into a relationship are documented in part below. Petitioner drafted a contract for Clayton to sign that promise for a period of one week while determining the best court of action for their pregnancy. Party A and Party B will exclusively explore a relationship with intention. There's no obligation to engage in intercourse if either party is uncomfortable with the act. My thought is, my opinion is, this would have provided Jane Doe a chance to bang and if they did bang, then there would be actual, uh, like, uh, maybe notice of a baby happening. Just a thought. That's just a thought, um, you know. Uh, but also, what was funny is she left out uh, in the contract, plural, one weeks. And that was because there were um, previous drafts of this quote-unquote contract that must have included a plural amount of weeks, whether it be two, three, or four weeks. Uh, which is really funny if you could imagine Clayton coming back. No, I'm not going to date you for four weeks. And then she's like, how about two? And Clayton's like, one week's. And she's like, all right, date me for one week's. Um, share those emails. Uh, <laughs> release the emails. Uh, by the way, could be, could be my best video we've ever made. I don't know. I don't know if this will show up in the court docket. But if it does, judge, please respectfully let me share these public documents with a little humor as I see fit. Uh, we laugh because we can't cry and there's nothing legal about that. Or illegal, I should say. Um, I have offered to give you control over the outcome of the pregnancy, Jane Doe says, if we date exclusively and care for one another. I need to know your decision tonight because I'm getting rid of the abortion pills. It's a no or if I don't hear back from you. Um, so she's got the abortion pills dangling them over the toilet, ready to flush them down the... I just imagine like a pack of Skittles just ready to go. 
Uh, petitioner threatens to post on her public Instagram account that she was pregnant with respondent's children's if he did not unblock her. If I can't get you to do it, then maybe the public can convince you to. Again, she has not posted on her social medias that she is pregnant. She wrote an article, uh, one in which her dad on Facebook said, congrats. I don't know. Uh, but I don't think we've seen her post on her Instagram at the old baby bump. Petitioner contacted respondent's father, Clayton's dad, ostensibly to convince him to force his son respondent to speak with her. I have not heard back from Clayton and presume he has still blocked me. We will share those emails. Hang tight. While this family case was pending, Petitioner posted an anonymous blog post on Medium.com, which she later deleted. She either deleted it or they deleted it. I'm not really sure. Contacted the news media and made uh, the Sun, and I believe also tried to get it printed in Huffington Post, and made multiple postings on Reddit.com claiming that she was pregnant with respondents' children and included a Dropbox of doctored medical documents. We know that because we helped expose, thanks to the flock, our underground ragtag team of uh, gossip geese that were able to uh, look and find that seven-year-old ultrasound and lay them together and show clearly that the images and videos she was sharing were not necessarily hers. She had then claimed, uh, they don't have this in the court papers, but she had then claimed to me that her account was hacked and her dog ate her homework, probably. Uh, Despite two fetal DNA testing indicating little to no fetal DNA and one loss in transit, Petitioner posted another Medium article identifying herself as the anonymous woman. We saw that. That's the article response to petitioner's petition oh here's the response to petitioner's petition to establish respondent affirmative to, um, affirmatively alleges that petitioner is fabricating pregnancy as well as refusing a paternity test they allege that neither pregnancy nor paternity has been proven um clayton alleges that petitioner is pregnant by him and therefore venue is not relevant uh, they excuse me they Clayton contests that petitioner is pregnant by him and therefore venue is not relevant. Uh, Respondent Clayton contests that petitioner is pregnant by him and since petitioner is unwilling to participate in a fourth pregnancy test. This could be like a Sesame Street, you know? We could have the count. Four pregnancy tests. Five. She has now lost the sixth pregnancy test. Paternity and the jurisdiction for determining its validity are unable to be proven determined. See, folks, it's a family show. We can learn how to count. Respondent, no fetal DNA. <laughs> ha, ha, ha. Respondent contests that petitioner is pregnant by him and affirmatively alleges that petitioner has neither proven. So again, same thing over and over. A not established proof of paternity. This is just all the legal talk. Petitioner was not married at the time the minor children were born or conceived or at least 10 months before minor children were born or conceived. Respondent contests that petitioner is pregnant by him and therefore legal decision making and parenting time are not relevant. So, okay, it goes on and on and on. We're going to kind of go through this. You can pause. Um, respondent affirmatively alleges that domestic violence has not occurred in this relationship. Respondent contests that petitioner is pregnant by him and therefore the parent information program is not relevant. So just all of the legal sort of uh, things here. Respondent Clayton uh, affirmatively alleges that to his knowledge, neither party has been convicted for a drug offense or driving under the influence of drugs or alcohol in the last 12 months. Respondent Clayton contests that petitioner is pregnant by him and therefore child support orders for either party are not relevant. Respondent denies any allegations that specifically admitted herein that respondent is entitled to an adjudication of non-paternity. Petitioner's relentless and harassment behavior through the media will only continue if this matter is not resolved by this court, finding respondent is not the father of any alleged and believed to be fictitious children. Rule 26, sanctions are appropriate. Petitioner has violated Rule 26B, Arizona Rules of Family Law Procedure, and sanctions under Rule 26C are appropriate. Petitioner filed this action for the purpose of harassing respondent and forcing him to communicate with her. Again, this is all offensive, offensive, offensive. This is Clayton just, this is uh, Clayton's running game, just pounding the ball three yards at a time down the field. Despite respondent's repeated requests, petitioner has provided respondent with no verified scientific evidence proving she is or was. Was pregnant. Further, after filing her petition, petitioner filed a motion to communicate. Threatens to take her pregnancy to the media if respondent did not com- communicate with her. This motion was denied. See, pet- see petitioner's motion to communicate filed August 8th. Petitioner also filed a motion for contempt, which this court also denied, which requested this court hold respondent in contempt for not communicating with her. Can you imagine that? We, uh, I'd like to arrest this man for not responding. No, no, don't get me wrong. 
I have plenty of friends I would like to arrest when they don't respond to me, being like, hey, will you help me move some boxes? And they don't respond. Contempt, Your Honor. Arrest this person. Um, I'll, I'll pay you in Chuck E. Cheese pizza. What do you need? See petitioner's motion for contempt filed August 23rd. As such, petitioner's petition lacks evidentiary support, is being presented for the improper purpose to harass respondent into communicating with her and to cause respondent to incur fees. Yeah, look, I'm no expert. We could have some sort of um, uh, anxious attachment style. I could, I will do anything and everything to get you to talk to me, which we will show in those emails as they come up. Um, the requirement of Rule 9C has been met insofar as there has been excessive communication regarding these issues, not limited to petitioners. Recent Medium article and the 500 plus texts and emails that predicate judges granting of the injunction against harassment. So what they're saying is the judge said quit harassing Clayton and then she wrote an article about how he's part of a bigger problem against her being cyberbullied. Um, you can't, I'm not harassing you, you're harassing me. You can't fire me, I quit, that type of deal. Respondent is entitled to his reasonable attorney's fees and costs incurred. So this is where they, they sort of add the fact that he's entitled to legal fees, which will open up the case to not being just dismissed right away. Petitioner initiated this filing based on a pregnancy that could not have occurred from oral sex. Despite that, well, we don't know. We've talked about blowjob babies. We got some sperm swimmers. Maybe there was a hole in the throat. Maybe, you know, he ate maybe some Captain Crunch and that caused some, you know... Uh, uh, passageways to open up. We don't know. You know, Captain Crunch, it'll cut your throat open. Despite this, petitioner repeatedly harassed respondent filed. Uh, sarcasm will be used between the court hearings here, folks. So don't uh, take everything I say with a grain of salt. Despite this, petitioner repeatedly harassed respondent filed numerous bad faith pleadings with this court in an effort to force respondent to communicate with her. Went to the media when respondent would not unblock her and fabricated medical documents. Petitioner's behavior is the very definition of unreasonableness. Wherefore, based upon all the foregoing, respondent respectfully requests the court enter the following orders. Issue an order declaring that respondent is not the natural father of the minor children, any children born to petitioner. Um, issue an order compelling Ravgen produce all records and documents related to the fetal DNA testing in this matter. I think that's an easy one. All right, show us your scientific proof. You already took the you test it's all out there you've agreed to the test so now show us that this court sanctioned petitioner pursuant to rule 26 that this court award respondent his uh, reasonable attorney's fees and costs um, for such other and further relief as the court deems just and proper under these circumstances and so then they sign it and then they do the exhibits we already have the injunction against harassment which of course showed what the court said the court finds reasonable evidence of harassment of the plaintiff by the defendant or, or that great or irreparable harm would result to the plaintiff if the injunction is not granted so they sided with Clayton there. And then we'll go to the exhibits here. And here are some of the emails, right, which we're going to share. Um, she said, uh, Clayton, I was going to ask if you wanted to read the article I wrote before submitting it to Huffington Post, but I know you won't respond. So I'll take that as if your permission to send. I'll take it that I have your permission to send it in as is. So that's that's um, baiting somebody. If you don't respond, I'll assume you're OK with this. Um, before I do that, and prior to your work getting involved with withholding income for child support, so she threatens him with uh, making him not receive his money, being held with, for child support, I wanted to ask one last time about the agreement. The amount of times she has threatened people with one last time is ridiculous. Let me just put it that way. This is your final offer. This is my last and best offer. She said, I also contacted another abortion pill company who said we could still do it at this point if we wanted to. We could still do it. It's not too late. You have the plan. This is plan D. We, we didn't do plan B or C. This is plan D. I didn't flush them. I flushed them, but they were ziplocked. We can unflush them down the toilet. We can, uh, we can unflush them up the toilet. You haven't and aren't putting pressure on me to do that, but it is really important that we talk about this if you don't want to have the twins with me. Your behavior leads me to believe that would be your preference, so you need to say something if it is. I will not hold it against you whatsoever if you sign the agreement. If you don't, that's fine, but we are having them. I just want to have a fresh start and remove all of this animosity from the picture. Okay, we've shared that before. And then here, of course, are the terms which we talked about um, that she wrote the, and of, and she, I think messed up party A and party B, the party A and party B will stipulate to dismiss blah, blah, blah. Once the pregnancy is confirmed by a doctor. So sent, during the one week period, if the decision is made to continue the pregnancy, then party A and party B will discuss what would make the best situation for the children, whether that be raising them together or apart folks, it's fan a fiction. Uh, the award for best fan fiction contract goes to Janeth Doeth. 
So there it is there. And then we have exhibit three, and then we have exhibit four, which are sideways. And then we have exhibit five, which are sideways. And then we share the uh, sort of uh, first article she wrote on Medium uh, about how she's the uh, anonymous woman and all of this. So we have all of that, all of the different photos of screen grabs and this and that, which we already shared. But we haven't shared the... Um, uh, uh, three emails here, the ones that were sideways. I put them upright as we do here, and I'm going to read them to you. Uh, so get out your magnifying glass here. Um, this is from Jane Doe. The subject is titled, Having the Baby If I Don't Hear Back Tonight. Again, a great country music song called Having the Baby If I Don't Hear Back Tonight. I might have to put that on a t-shirt. I'm sorry. I don't mean to desecrate the uh, art of uh, birth, but... Having the baby if I don't hear back tonight. Leave a comment. Would you buy that? Oh, Dave's trying to monetize. Well, I mean, someone's got to pay for these bills. Um, all right. So I here's what she wrote. I'm physically and emotionally exhausted from the pregnancy and all of this. I just need clarity as to what we are doing. I have offered to give you control over the outcome of the pregnancy if we date exclusively and care for each other. I bring a lot to the table and feel like I could really make you a better person. Yes, I've called out your BS a lot, but it's because I know you are better than how you act sometimes. I get your anxiety because I've been there and truly believe in your mission despite the fact that you haven't shown me kindness when clearly I've been emotionally struggling throughout all of this. I couldn't give a shit that you were The Bachelor. <laughs> that also could be a funny shirt. I don't give a shit that you were The Bachelor and still know nothing about you other than the clips I saw of you with two girls when I was angry at you. I want to get to know you and be a great partner for you. I, I, I would feel exactly the same way if I was in a situation with any man. And by the way, folks, I read this and I actually feel bad. I feel bad for her when I read this. I truly, truly do. But... Then on the same note, she's suing me, right? So even though I feel bad, the being sued outweighs the feelings of badness that I feel. Do you understand what I'm saying? And this clearly hasn't been ended because some people say, oh, just drop it, whatever. She just wrote another article about me. So, you know what I mean? It just isn't going away. Um, she said, uh, she said uh, let's go to the third paragraph. Let's jump ahead. In regards to intimacy, I know it's important to you and it is to me as well. If you think about it, having sex with me is the safest thing you can do at this point. I'm already pregnant. And if we choose to go this route and trust each other enough to have sex, then we are at the point where I would be taking abortion pills. So there's no risk. Also, under no circumstances would I have an abortion if you want to be on dating apps or seeing other women while we are figuring this out. I would want to date with intention. Very Maddie Pruitt of her. I know what I bring to the table as a partner, and I'm well aware that you don't want to become a father right now. It's a win-win situation for you, but a huge leap of faith for me. You haven't been trustworthy to this point, so I'm the one taking a gamble on the outcome of this. You could be leading me on, but I would take your word that you're not because, for whatever reason, despite how you've treated me, I believe in you. We are both hard-headed as hell, but I think we can make a very good team. If I didn't think so, I would just go ahead and have the kids since, like I said, I want to be a mom more than anything in the world. I need to know your decision tonight because I'm getting rid of the abortion pills if it's a no or if I don't hear back from you. I really do need to adjust my seizure medication and take other precautions for my health and the well-being of our baby if we are going to have a kid. You're the father. There's no two ways about it. So saying no here is a guarantee you will be a dad. And this is before she claims that they were twins. Uh, some believe that um, she she claimed they were twins because there was no effective prenatal test uh, of paternity for twins, which we now know is not true because Clayton, uh, like any desperate man, used Google to find the one company that does the test. So long story short from this email, and I know your jaws are on the ground. You feel icky and gross. You've spit out your ramen noodles. I totally understand. His response to her saying, hey, sex with me is the safest thing you can do. This feels like every guy, every 23-year-old guy at 1 a.m. At a, at a bar trying to convince some girl to come home with him. Technically, I'm the safest guy you could have sex with. Clayton's response. And again, June 28th. I will not date you in any capacity as I do not have any interest in you. So you can proceed however you'd like. I will be awaiting the ultrasound on the eighth week and then we'll do a paternity test as soon as I'm able to. You have told me a million times now that you'll give me one more chance to move forward with dating you, but I'm 100% that's not going to do that. So please just stop communicating with me from this point forward. I will find someone else to love and share my life with. I may honestly move to the East Coast at this point as well. And, and, you, and you have to remember, these 
quotes from him were taken out of context and shared from her initially, which led a lot of people to be very angry with Clayton. Oh, he's a horrible person the way he's talking to her. And my rational response from day flipping one was, oh, I'm not going to believe an anonymous person's quotes that don't share the full uh, email. Well, here it is, folks. Uh, he says, all I have to do is either take 100% custody of the child or allow you to have 100% custody. Joint isn't an option and is never mandated. That's common sense. Besides, I will fight until I have no fight left in me to not have you be a part of my life. The courts can't force someone to stay with someone else. That's unheard of and has never been done before. Just remember, there is no scenario in which we raise the child together. If you even have a child, which I'm still not convinced, but if you do and it is somehow miraculous mine, like I said, I'll take care of the child if that's what it comes to, but I will not under any circumstance co-parent with you. Just want to make that clear. I would rather co-parent with literally anybody else besides you, as you have shown me you don't respect my opinion. You just force what you want onto people to get your way, and it is gross. That's my two cents. Take it or leave it. Again, there's no more need for conversation and no more need for you to pester me each day until the eighth week. I tell you to stop sending me messages and you just have zero respect and keep sending them regardless. So I suppose I'll just continue to receive them and not respond as my days are much better when I don't interact with you. Um, signed, Clayton Eckerd. Here's the next email. She says, only open this if you want option A and will unblock me. Seriously. And I don't even know what option A is, but we're about to find out. And if you want option A, I will not post this. I am just looking for support during this incredibly overwhelming time. Okay, so now we have her, I believe, uh, I don't know if it's called blackmailing or what, saying, I won't post this Instagram announcement if you if you choose option A. She said, final email regarding this. <laughs> <laughs> oh, final email regarding this. Yeah, this is three months ago. Uh, she's funny. You should, you know, she should just try stand-up comedy. You know, I mean, that'd be, you could have some fun premises there. Final email regarding this, but I wanted to give you the courtesy of showing you the post. I'm attaching the photo I'm going to use. I'm over being treated like stuff. And at least if this is public, you'll have to give a statement to the media. Not sure when I will put it up. The caption is, surprise, I can't wait for the arrival of these two next Valentine's Day. On a more serious note, their father, Clayton, has said he wants nothing to do with this process. He has blocked me from messaging him, refuses to see me and his growing babies, and says he will continue to ignore me. He doesn't want to have anything to do with them when they're born and thinks they will negatively impact his dating life. Tag him and let him know what you think i mean this is kind of like extortion right guys this is kind of like cancel culture's extortion if you do not blah 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 i will post this and in her own happy pregnancy post one in which when my wife and i announced our pregnancy we sat there and we hit publish together we shared a moment of tears we waited for the love and phone calls from friends to share this joyous moment in her chance to have this monumentous, amazing Valentine's Day baby post, she says, tag Clayton and let him know what you think. No child should be born under those sort of negative foundational uh, conditions. She said, please note the following legal waiver. If after proof of opening is obtained, I choose not to respond to this email, I am confirming that its content is true. <laughs> oh no oh no oh she oh my gosh this is why i don't always read them beforehand i cannot i'm not a good enough actor to make this up she says and i know and i know by the way my wife's listening in the other room because she please note the following legal waiver if after proof of opening is obtained and again, this is supposed to be read by Clayton. I choose not to respond to this email. I am confirming that the content is true. Let me tell you this. If you choose not to like this video, you're confirming that I'm the best YouTuber out there. What? This includes my acknowledgement of paternity. In addition, by not responding, I'm, I'm giving my approval to so-and-so to post the above content on social media. Clayton, this is a situation you can't run and hide from. You will need to take accountability for your actions, which created twins. If I can't get you to do it, then maybe the public can convince you to all the best. Wow. 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 What do we say to that? Unbelievable. We're getting to the end. Trust me. Oh my gosh. Okay. We can't read this whole thing, right? 
Is it worth it? What do you guys think? Should we read it? Everyone say yes or no. Should we read this? Okay. You said yes. Pregnancy confirmation via ultrasound and next steps. This is from Jane Doe. And this was written to, I believe, Clayton's father. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to give an update on where things stand as I have not heard back from Clayton and presume he has still blocked me, which he told me before he does when he doesn't want to deal with a situation. When I'm being accused of being the father of unborn twins, I hit the block button. Just like a PSA by Clayton. If only I had the opportunity to do the same, I, uh, but obviously my body isn't allowing me to forget that I am pregnant. Rather than continuing to send him several emails a day, I hope that we can meet in person to discuss what is going on because as Clayton said last week, I feel we need to have a face-to-face -face discussion. It's too easy to get upset via text, but in person conversations are more caring and cordial. I believe this is exactly what we need as texting hasn't been working well and we should have been talking in person for most of this anyways. Texting isn't meant for meaningful, impactful, life-changing conversations and I've known and learned that plenty of times. I agree with her. She said, I told Clayton last week that I was going to be going to California for the weekend and that I was going to get abortion pills. It would be much easier to do so there in California for many reasons and less traumatic because there isn't a law there like there is in Arizona that the mother has to view the ultrasound. Interesting. Arizona has a law that the mother has to view the ultrasound, which I didn't know if this is even, I don't know if this is true, but taking her word for it, which we probably never should, is very fascinating because... There is no ultrasound. He has told me that allegedly he has told me that he wants me to take the pills, but understands that his preference for me doing so because it would impact his ability to date other women in the future is not enough of a reason for me to end a human life. I'm attaching a screenshot of my chart after my visit on Sunday to Planned Parenthood in Orange County, which confirms that I had an ultrasound that was consistent with the conception date of 520 when I was with Clayton. And like I've said, he's the only person I've been with since March of 2022. There was a gestational sac, meaning a viable pregnancy and that I refused to view the ultrasound and take the abortion pills at the clinic. They don't typically allow you to take them home but since i live out of state and was as conflicted as i was they allowed me to again i haven't seen um this attachment this planned parenthood ultrasound or whatever i haven't seen that now that we know we have a viable pregnancy things seem all the more urgent i'll continue to say un until i'm blue in the face that clayton is a father and there is zero percent chance that it is anyone else i told him that he needs to pay for the prenatal paternity test because it is not providing me with any information that i don't know but that i will gladly reimburse him for the full amount if i'm wrong he agreed to that. I am eager to get it done and have contact to multiple companies about the timing of it. The consensus is that while it can be performed at seven weeks, there's a chance that there is not enough fetal DNA present at that point, in which case you would have to repeat the hundred, the $1,500 test. It seems like we would be safest doing it at eight weeks, although Arc Point Labs based in Scottsdale said 12 weeks was their minimum. The results will come back in seven to 10 business days. It was, plan it was explained to me at Planned Parenthood that medication, the medication abortions are most successful early on in the pregnancy and that as the weeks go on, they become less effective. But uh, That being the pill, I believe. By the time the results are back from the prenatal paternity test, I would need to do a surgical abortion, which I, I will not do under any circumstances. I only mention this because once the prenatal paternity test is taken, it's a done deal that I'm having the child and there will not be an option for an abortion once the results come back. My preference has been to have the baby all along, so that's obviously not an issue for me. But if it is for Clayton, he needs to know that I haven't lied about one thing so far, despite his doubts. He himself had made, had me take a paternity, a pregnancy test, which turned out positive, And now a doctor has confirmed the pregnancy on an ultrasound and said that it was the very small size. It should be based on the date. I was intimate with him. She said intimate again. She didn't say she had sex. Words mean a lot, don't they? If he doesn't trust me, that's fine, and I'm more than happy to prove him wrong again. I just know how high the stakes are right now and want to be clear that this really is the last time that I will consider an abortion. I tell you what, Janie, why don't you prove us wrong again? Prove us wrong again, please. The last thing I would want if I were in Clayton's position is to feel like I didn't have an opinion or something so important, but it seems like his reaction to the stakes getting higher is to withdraw even further. However, there are several factors at play that he needs to consider regarding my health and its impact on the baby if we decide to carry it to term. First of all, my stress levels have a major impact on the fetus's development in the womb and not having an emotional support from Clayton like he promises has been extremely difficult on me. For uh, More importantly, though, my neurologist has empathized Emphasized that I need to change my dose of epilepsy medication significantly because I'm at a higher risk of a seizure during pregnancy and having one could have a terrible impact on the baby. I've delayed going on, up on it because I haven't known what we are doing, but I really need to make a decision. I don't think that either Clayton nor I could forgive ourselves if the child ends up having a lifelong condition that could have been preventable. 
All right, let's round this puppy up. On a personal level, I wanted to share that a big reason I am against terminating the pregnancy is because of the impact not having an abortion out of my family. And then she shares a family uh, excerpt, which I'm not going to read. I apologize for yet another email, but I feel really helpless in terms of communicating with Clayton. And as the father of the child, he's the only person whose support and input really matter to me. Obviously, having a child would completely change the course of our lives, and I want to figure out what we are doing together. I know that many women would make their own decision without regard for the baby's father's opinion, but that's not me, and I need him to understand that. I really care about Clayton feelings but can't take them into consideration if he is treating me like this if we are going to move go uh if we are going forward with this that's great and i want to be able to get excited about it but right now it feels like there's tension in the air about what is happening and the silence is deafening if there's anything you can do to talk to him i would really appreciate it thank you so much for your time all the best she says and folks that takes us to the end of two. Okay, so there's two more here, but they're very short. They don't really say too much. Uh, notice a filing affidavit of non-paternity. So we have that exhibit right there, which is uh, Clayton's uh, sworn affidavit of non-paternity. I, Clayton Ecker, being duly sworn upon my oath under penalty of perjury, of perjury to pose and say, Jane and I had one sexual encounter on May 20th, 2023. We need a holiday name for May 20th. Uh the official day of fellatio, where she performed oral sex on me. We never had sexual intercourse or engaged in conduct that could lead to conception. Uh, Jane Doe continues to claim that I am the father of alleged twins. I do not believe she's pregnant and certainly not pregnant by me. Attached here, too, is a notice of claim of paternity. To be clear, I dispute that the interaction between Jane and I could have resulted in a pregnancy. I am concerned that if I do not file with the putative father registry, she will use her social media platform to claim that she has had my children or that she somehow put them up for adoption to explain their non-existence. Consistent with filings and family court in Maricopa County under Kate, uh, cause number, I am asking the court to make specific findings of non-paternity. So there we have it where uh, he says, I don't believe I'm the father, but I want to be in this registry. That way, if she claims and goes up for adoption, he would be the first person to say, you know, whatever. So now, now it'll be, if she does claim adoption, he's going to call bullshit. And he, and he sort of forced her hand. Notice of appearance. Uh, here's our fourth matter here. Um, and that just states that Clayton has new, new uh, legal representation that's going to be taking care of him. Folks, that's everything. That's all of it. It's a little bit longer than I wanted to make. It's such a long video. It'll probably be our only Bachelor video of the day. If you um, enjoy the sort of time that goes into this and want to communicate farther, we will be going live right after this on Patreon, patreon.com slash Dave Neal. There, oh boy, you stuck around to the end. I'm just going to say this. Chase J. Jones has spoken. We'll have a little bit more on that later on. Hit the subscribe button. Not ready to talk about that just yet, but we will share some more findings from this offensive we saw today on uh, this bloody Monday. Patreon.com slash Dave Neal. We'll be back with you right after this. <laughs> 